What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. I am your coach and host, Josh, here with his co host and co coach, KG, and I'm in the house. And we're coming at you with 10 incredible life changing tips to live a fitter, healthier, and happier life. And these were inspired from the legend John Roan. He's an incredible motivational speaker, educator all these incredible things. And a lot of these tips were inspired from some of his top points. I was digging through some of it and I'm like, you know what, let's make an episode on this. Let's expand on it. So I'm really excited to jump into this with number one, which is don't wish it was easier, make yourself better. So it's really easy to say, oh, I wish I wasn't so busy right now. I didn't have all these challenges. I wish I was stronger. I wish I wasn't sick. It's so easy to always wish for things that are outside of our control, but that makes us victims to our circumstance. That makes us out of control of what we're able to do and how we're able to move forward. Instead, when we said, how can I be better? How can I adapt to this situation? For me, having a second baby, two under two, I'm like, I need to operate better. And I did that with my first baby. I've always heard, oh, everything was great until I had a kid and my life fell apart. My fitness was gone. And It really just hit me that I'm like, I could never look at my child in the eye and say, I used to be fit before I had you and like have that be my reasoning for that. So I'm like, I need to adapt. I need to get better. I need to find solutions. I need to baby wear to get my walks and to be with him and listen to books, to do sports activities with him, to eat better, to order meal prep, to be prepared. Like once again, don't just wish the situation weren't what it is isn't what it is, I suppose. And instead say, how can I adapt? How can I be better? How can I do that harder thing to make myself stronger? So this is a really passionate one. And I'm telling you, if you change your mindset to this, no matter what life throws at you, you'll be able to adapt and succeed. Yeah. I feel like it's so much easier for some people at first to just like wish for a different circumstance or a better environment or whatever it is. But honestly, just making yourself better is just such a simple, it may take a bit of time, right? Especially if you're not used to, but it's the best way for just long-term success and overall happiness. But I'm going to jump into number two here, which is if you don't like how things are, change. Plain and simple, honestly, it's just such a great tip because I feel like a lot of times people go about their lives and you know I've been I think we're all guilty of making these mistakes and that's why I like sharing these and uh, because we can all learn from it right is to just once again wish for a different situation to you know think that maybe things are just like the way they are when we always have control like we can always make that change. It's just a matter of if we decide to do it, right? You know, they say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Uh, Even another thing written down here that Josh had was take the first step. You aren't a tree, right? Like you can move, you can change, you can adapt. Uh, And even here, the worst thing one can do is not try to be aware of what one wants and not to give into it, to spend years in silent hurt, wondering if something could have materialized never knowing. So yeah, definitely one of my biggest fears. Like that's why I'm always open to change. I know it does take some time and there's a lot of mental barriers and whatnot, but when you realize that we're always adapting, we're always growing, things are always changing and you're okay with that. And you're looking to be able to change in certain circumstances, it can make a world of difference. And I really, really encourage that for you. Yeah. You're not the tree. I love that quote. And I also love, don't be anxious, be active. So instead of sitting there, just thinking and ruminating and brooding over how many things are going on in your life. Say, what's that first step? What can I do? How can I do something to alleviate this situation? Even sometimes you'd be like, wow, like this is a really horrible situation. Things are falling apart, but I'm going to go on a walk. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to take some breaths. Everything's going to be okay. Like anything you can do in those circumstances or those situations. And obviously that's a more specific example, but sometimes too, just like looking at your problems and taking bite-sized solutions is super important. And my next tip really also adds on top of that, and that's always be reading. So one of the beauties of me doing a reading challenge last year where I aimed to read a book a week the entire year, so 54 books, which was successful, is even to this year, I didn't necessarily have a challenge, but it's funny, I actually checked yesterday, and I'm still perfectly on pace to do 54 books this year, which is funny, because I've just built that habit. I feel like after doing something for a year it's just a lot easier to keep that habit so that's a little extra bonus tip is long-term habits stick but by reading i feel i'm always getting great source of inspiration and consider someone will spend like 
30, 40, 60, 80 years of their life focusing on a topic, trying to become an expert in a certain field. And then they'll put that all down and distill it into a very short form piece of content that we can digest for like 10 to 20 bucks. It's a no brainer. And not only do you, you don't have to read it, you can listen to it. It's absolutely incredible that we're able to have such amazing resources available to us. And I'm telling you, knowledge is power. By reading more, you're gonna be more inspired. You're gonna be more motivated. You can really narrow in on specific topics. And it's just such an easy change in your life you can do that will compound so much if you're unsure of where to start i recommend audiobooks in the car or 10 pages a day yeah for myself i it's a lot about figuring out what works for you and one thing that has worked since hearing josh talk about it previously was i'm always having different books on the go for the different situation so obviously an audiobook i'll usually get them from josh my kindle i like to read before bed which is just a fun book that's just like keeping me intrigued it's not really growth oriented but it's like kind of creative creative and it's uh it's a good time right it's it's something that allows me to relax before bed and um, keep my screen time down while looking at the kindle because you can navigate that and then my business and growth book which i read either on my porch or just in my nice chair i bought a reading chair which i really yeah uh, which i really like and i just really only read in that chair so yeah what's cool is like really figuring out what works for you those are the things that i personally have found to actually enjoy and it's cool to be able to figure out what you actually like as well right to feel figure out what works best for you and i thought that was a great tip and I was guilty probably a couple of years ago. I think I read like like seven books or something in a year. And I'm like, man, I need to get this up because yeah, I can say I'm busy. And I've always have to do work and I'm training a million clients, but at the same time we can always find a way and uh, it's, it's always worth it. Um, number four here is something I really, really like here. Learn how to be happy with what you have while you pursue all that you want. So similar to fitness goals, similar to just overall growth, especially if you're striving for more and you know always looking to become a better version of yourself, I really do think it's so easy to just focus on like what you're striving for, which is absolutely fantastic, but to forget what's going on in your current life and what you can all be grateful for. And, and I think the easiest way to really be able to be you know happy with what you have is just simple gratitude practices, whether you do you know, sit there and think about it or you journal it. Um, there's a million different things that would work for you. And once again, it's about finding what works best and what you can consistently do, just like the whole reading side of things. But uh, yeah, I just hear so often people say something like, when I have a certain amount of money, I'll be free and I'll be happy. And then it just will always keep going up that threshold. Similar to fitness, you have these specific goals, whether it's a lifting goal, a fat loss goal. And I think it's so important to just be happy with where you're at, to know that you're gonna be progressing and to be able to just enjoy the process along the way. Incredibly well said. And my next one is a quote, and I think this is a great quote. It is, speak as if you know what you're talking about. Listen as if you don't. Act as a way to find out. So here's what I take from this. It's be confident when you're speaking. Be confident. Be sure of yourself. Don't be second-guessing yourself. But when you have the opportunity to learn and listen, be quiet. Absorb. Take in what you can from other people. And they say even one of the best things you can do in conversation is just listen more and truly listen with intention. Don't be rushing to say what you want to say. And really see you can always learn and gain something from someone else. And then acting is a great way to find out things, to test things, to be sure of them. So I thought this was a really fun quote that I wanted to go ahead and wedge in here. Beautiful. And yeah, number six is going to be just simply to plan. So similar to what I was saying, I feel like it's a good concept of just like figuring out what works best for you because each situation will be different based off of who you are and uh, what you can stick to. But similar to planning, I know a lot of times people will say they plan five-year goals and 10-year goals and they map everything out. There's a lot of people kind of like me who like to focus on like what's in front of me, like a, a little bit further in advance, but not too far where it's like, I have no idea where I'm going to be and what's going to be happening. But I simply find that planning is one of the greatest things. And I just naturally am a planner. Um, I guess, I don't know how it just came to me, but I find that I love at least knowing to a certain extent what's going on. You know, even I shared with uh, our clients recently that Sunday, in my opinion, is one of the greatest days to just get things planned out. So I'll sit there for about 30 minutes, nothing crazy. I'll put everything into the schedule. I'll know what's going on, you know, what special events we have. You know, I'll have to see maybe if there's a day where I don't go to the gym the regular time and I'll have to navigate if I have some sort of appointment, put in the schedule, send some messages out to some buddies if we're gonna go do a biking event or something. Be like, hey, you know, Wednesday, a reminder. And I find that this is great because it just allows you to be ahead of schedule. You can be proactive. And even here, Josh wrote 
this down. I thought it was great saying, I find it fascinating that most people plan their vacations with better care than they plan their lives. And I think that's pretty, pretty powerful because obviously I'm talking a lot about planning things within the week, but I do think that one of the greatest things we can do is just plan our overall goals, right? You know, kind of sit down with some systems and we do this every single month. Uh, I like to focus on weekly increments, monthly increments, and then yearly. And I find those are the three things that can really help you stay on track. I do think a lot of daily tasks and a lot of daily planning is fantastic, but I do find that, you know, it's not for, for everyone. And uh, I really do like the weekly side of things. And uh, yeah, I'm sure Josh has to say something about that as well. Yeah. I just, I love planning in general. So I think Kyle nailed it there. And by planning and even accepting plans change and just saying, hey, I have a rough idea of what I'm looking to achieve. There will be bumps, turns, speed bumps, everything along the way. But what's important is you have that vision in mind and you will get there. And I think a great way to add on top of a plan is really having a personal philosophy. So Jim Rohn had mentioned your personal philosophy is the greatest determining factor of how your life works out. So I love that concept of a personal philosophy. Like, are you someone who thinks how I do everything is how I do everyone, everything? Are you someone who says, I take control of my situation. I'm not victimless and wishing for other things. Are you someone who says, I always make a de decision to like never miss twice. When I have a bad week, I'll never have two bad weeks or bad meal, one of two bad meals. Like it's really important you identify who you are, who you want to be and like what your non-negotiables are. And as you find them, you can really stick to them. And this will stack up so much your fitness, health and happiness. And number eight is just simply knowing that motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. So I find those that stick to something for a shorter amount of time are those that are reliant on motivation. They're only doing it when they're super excited, when they're winning, when everything is all sunshine and rainbows. But I really think that when you focus on building those systems to be able to create that habit, whatever that looks like for you, that's what's going to keep you going because you know, I see so many people do something for maybe a couple weeks to a month, if that. Um, and that's because once again, reliant on motivation, those that keep going, that keep showing up, that continuously follow these tasks and, and what we're mentioning, like reading, for example, like if you only read when you're motivated, it's very possible you'll very rarely read. If you read because you built it into the schedule, because it's a habit, because you don't really think about it. Like when I get into my car, the first thing I do is put on the audiobook. It's not something, it, it doesn't matter if I'm motivated. It doesn't matter if I had a bad night's sleep. I'm not feeling it. I press that button and it's just, it's what I'm used to. And there's a lot of things in my life and I know Josh as well and our successful clients and all that great stuff. They do things just because it's what we know. It's because you've done it for a certain amount of time. It's because you've done something for longer than 30 days or 21 days or 66, whatever that magic number is to create a habit. And when you allow yourself to do that and you build up that discipline, you're going to be absolutely unstoppable. Well said. And next up, I have to say either you run the day or the day runs you. And I think that speaks for itself. I shared that on our Instagram to our broadcast uh, little channel there on Instagram. So if you're not following us on Instagram, you're missing out. We're always letting extra goodies and motivation out there. So be sure to give us a follow at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And before Kyle gives the last one, which is a really thoughtful and uh, just something you're really gonna think about, I do wanna challenge you to check out our online coaching. If you've been looking for a fitness coach and you wanna level up your results and get the best results possible, possible. And if you're curious how we're able to generate such amazing transformations for our clients and why we have over 4,000 of them with a guarantee alongside it. it's your success or your money back. So you have nothing to fear. Check out our first link in the description down below. Perhaps you've never had a coach before. Maybe you're advanced, maybe you're a beginner. Regardless, we're going to be there to get you to the next level. So be sure to check out that first link to see how we're going to take care of you and get you to that next level. What is our last and final tip for the day? And number 10, this one is from my personal list. And I'm actually putting together a Reels video about getting outside more. Uh, the other day, I just went out into nature for a nice walk. Uh, and I honestly just thought, man, I need to do this more often. There's never a time where I go outside, where I go for a walk, I sit on my front porch, I go into nature, like very rarely, unless it's just something happens, you get bit by a mosquito or a wasp or some unfortunate event, like 99.9 .9 plus percent of the time, you will feel better. You'll get vitamin D, the wind will be blowing, the birds will be chirping. And a lot of us are just so cooped up inside. And I really encourage you to figure out and plan, you know, kind of going back to one of those tips, planning, how can we create a system where we get more of it? So I know sometimes people will say, oh, I can't, you know, my work is crazy. Okay. That's kind of 
you know, you're making excuses, right? Like sit down and think, how can I get out there? Whether it's earlier in the morning, whether it's a nighttime walk, like a post dinner walk, there's always different ways and you can never go wrong with just spending more time outside. Um, some people, you know, I uh, may disagree, but I'd say 99.9% .9 of people will always feel better. And I'm so, so passionate about this one. Yeah, whether it's raining, snowing, sunny, whatever it may be, just feels good to be outside. I love the analogy of if you have a dog and you let your dog outside, they come to life, they feel rejuvenated. And I find uh, even springtime, humans are the same way. You see everyone coming out, mowing their lawns, getting fired up, smiling, people are cheerier. And like, it's just so easy to get cooped up, being in cars, being indoors, being on screens, but like, just spend some more time outside, whatever outside is for you. If you live in the desert, go, go dance around in the sand or something like that. If you live in a forest, take advantage of that and take advantage of what's near you as well as when you travel. Like, don't be a stranger to it. Even our gym just has a fantastic outdoor space. It's nice just being out there, listening to audiobooks out there, reading, just being present, meditating, like take advantage of what's around you, get outside. Um, and we hope these tips help you a lot. There's a lot to think about here. So don't be scared to give this a re-listen if you need to, because it is a phenomenal episode. I, we're definitely excited to work with you one-on-one. -on -one, so definitely be sure to check out that first link. Thanks for tuning in today. Peace out.